So Weaver Bird. Not only will see Weaver Bird um, smooth things for you, uh, let you work with that kind of primitive to sub-D workflow, but it'll also um, allow you to thicken things, perforate things, uh, et cetera, to add uh, unique qualities to your mesh, to also add rationality to your mesh, and uh, lastly, to prepare your mesh um, for something like 3D printing. So what we're going to look at is Weaver Bird Thicken. And Weaver Bird Thicken uh, computes a new mesh that is a closed solid. Now, this is provided that the original mesh is something that can be offset and oriented. So when we talk about the faces having directionality, this is and the fact that we were talking about unifying mesh normals, this is where it'll come back to bite you if you're not paying attention. So if all the meshes are uniform, all the faces are uniform, then when it tries to offset and thicken, they'll all go the same direction. If they're not, you'll have uh, thickening happening in two directions, which means that you'll no longer have a watertight mesh. Okay, so a lot of the things that we were talking about at the beginning of the webinar are, are really made relevant um, here uh, now. So that, that Weaver Bird sub-D component that we've been looking at, um, we're going to take a look at how to add that thickness in. So here we have our subdivided mesh. If we go back to Weaver Bird, you'll notice that next to sub D, you have something called transform. And in the transform dropdown, there is an, op uh, an, an option for thickening meshes. Now, my component uh, is 4 inches by 4 inches. And the thickness that I would like to achieve in my component is going to be about an eighth of an inch, um, maybe to 0.15. So I'm going to create a slider here. And I'm going to set this for my mesh thickness to be between, I'll say 0.065 and 0.25. Now, remember, this is going to be related to the units, and I'm working in inches. So I'm going to say 0.125. This is my distance, and here's my mesh. Now, if I take that into here, you can see that now my mesh has thickness, right? It has a hard edge here. If I change this value, you can see that the thickness will increase or decrease. Okay. And if I would like, I could even take at the very end of this another smoothing uh, Catmull Clark and, um, and smooth it once more. So I'll say Weaver Bird, Catmull Clark, and I'm going to smooth this one more time. And I just did it level one so that the, the edge here just um, smooths a little bit. Now, if, for instance, you did not want to do that, let's say too many faces, you could always take your thicken component and just put it before the smooth. In doing so, you'll see that right here now we have right, a smoother uh, kind of transformation. If I take this and bake it, you can see that we now have a thickened mesh. And uh, just to be clear about that, I'll go ahead and, uh, and just make a quick little clipping plane in Rhino. Um, you don't have to do this. But uh, again, I'm just doing this so we can see that it does have thickness here. And as I move into the interior, I can see the thickness of the mesh. 
This is a new feature in Rhino, this clipping plane um, also adds the, uh, the uh, sectioning uh, poche, which is a, a pretty nice little feature. All right, great. So this is a mesh totally ready to be 3D printed. And uh, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So let's go back one step. And I'm going to turn this back on uh, really quickly. And take one more look at uh, some of the functionality um, over here in Weaverbird. Now, before I thicken the mesh, I'm going to take a look at this one, one more component called picture frame, which is really, really cool. What picture frame does is it, it actually adds in an additional face, um, a set of faces around the face that you have. And it leaves uh, a kind of opening here. And you can control that by adding a slider that takes a percentage of the edge length, so say 5% to 45%, right? And allows you to create bigger or smaller windows. And again, I mean, the mesh is super interesting. You just throw it right in here, and now you have a whole other mesh constructed. Things to consider, right? If you want these to be treated separately in here, you would want to um, make sure that you keep these separate whenever you're doing this before uh, bringing them into, uh, into a Grasshopper. But uh, for our purposes, this will be fine. I'm just going to bake this really quick. Okay, and we can see that we have this mesh here. Okay, so that file with the picture frame, I just, I just want to show you this really quickly. Um, but we did include um, uh, that in the, in the files um, for you to review uh, later. 